Naomi Jacobson, and I'm the chairwoman for the Quileute Tribe. So I've been in my position, this will be my fourth year on Tribal Council, so my first year as the Tribal Chairwoman. In the housing area and the developments that we've had within our tribal village that are related to like our, we call them unrestricted funds, um, one of the big projects that we have been able to contribute to is uh, more housing development. So we had uh, Quileute Heights and then we had Ravencrest and we decided to add a development called Ravencrest 2. So I know that there was one handicap accessible home that was built in Ravencrest 2 and then I think we also have um, there are about eight homes that are I think three and four bedroom homes so um, we're just very grateful that we have those additional funds to provide more homes within our community you know it's still a challenge for us we definitely need more homes and plan on doing that with the newly uh, or re I'll call them reacquired lands that we just received and we're working on getting those into trust but we definitely want to move more of our tribal members back home where they're limited by housing resources but also moving whoever chooses from the lower village to the higher ground which would be in the Ravencrest area so um, I think that that project was at the very least 50 percent funded I wasn't on tribal council because it's been probably at least 10 years since those homes were built and um, that was one of the most first, most significant investments that we had with our, our economic development dollars. The homes that were built in Ravencrest too, we were able to invest economic development gaming dollars since we have, you know, a percentage is allocated toward economic development. We were able to fund those at at least 50% through those gaming dollars, so we're grateful that we have that resource available to us. The tribal members have benefited because we have had so many tribal members who have had to live in multifamily homes. So there may be three to four families living in one home. So we're able to provide uh, families with their own home and also to have pride in those homes, um, to have some, have some ownership in their own space to be able to create their own family unit. The tsunami legislation. Now we have the initiative called Move to Higher Ground. So due to the tsunami risk that we have of our lower village, um, our tribal school is right here at ground level. It's probably 100 yards from the ocean and the mouth of the river. So one of the first things that we want to do is move our tribal school to higher ground. So we're using a lot of our, again, economic development gaming dollars to plan for that move, not only for our school, but for our elders, and then we'll move into our uh, additional housing and uh, our tribal government because we're all located in the lower village at this time. So we're investing in those initial plans. So we have a move to higher ground coordinator who's helping pull that together. We're really starting to plan on paper our infrastructure before we start seeking additional funds. The gaming dollars are not going to provide 100% of that because they are limited and we have a lot, of, a lot of other program operations that we manage on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're trying to set aside some of those and ensure that we have the funds um, to at least start the plans and start saving to invest in what we're going to need to build, which is going to include um, you know, the water infrastructure, the, all utilities and broadband and that sort of thing. So we talk about move to higher ground and moving our children and our elders and our entire community to safety, but we also have needs such as broadband being in this rural area, it's so limited here, and there aren't a lot of grants and support funds uh, to be able to develop those systems that we need, the infrastructure that we need for broadband, for education, for our tribal government, and just day-to-day -day operations. It's like the postal system anymore, uh, like the telephone systems. It's a utility that we need, and that's something that we're also considering that we may need to invest in if we can't identify the funds. Right now, it's really having an impact on our children's education in the tribal school, as well as those going to on to higher learning so you know in this day and age you need a lot of internet access for online classes and so we'll you know we have to weigh out and determine 
what strategy we're going to use and what is the most important. So the funds are not unlimited. Um, we are able to provide a lot of support programs which are necessary in our rural area, but we also have to look at the day-to-day -day basic needs and broadband is one of those. Okay. Uh, the Quileute Tribe has used some of the gaming funds or, um, to support a transitional housing unit. We have four cabins that uh, we don't necessarily have a, I'm trying to think of what they're called, mm -hmm. a model per se that we're using, but we're developing our own model from trial and error. We had them set up as just shelters a few years back and we determined that that didn't work out so well. Uh, so we wanna be proactive and so we've hired a part-time case manager to check in with the tenants. The residents' timelines are three to six months, six months maximum, because we want to capitalize on the number of people that we're able to help, but we don't want them to rely on the transitional housing because it's intended to be transitional. So um, three to six months, they meet on a regular basis with the case manager who can assist them with local resources in the area. It may be counseling, it may be chemical dependency. They also have to have drug testing before they're allowed to move in. Um, if they are in recovery, they have to meet with their programs on a regular basis, but also be looking for jobs. If they are unemployed, they have to turn in um, reports saying that they've applied for jobs or that they're attending counseling sessions, they're attending their substance abuse counseling. But that case manager is, is part-time, but just a support person to help them with local resources. And it's been in operation for a little over six months. Um, there are only four units, and from what we can tell, it's been very successful. So if we didn't have the gaming dollars, we wouldn't be able to provide these opportunities to our community and tribal members. Um, I do want to say one more thing. It's ahead. nice that we don't have to rely on grant funding because we wouldn't be able to make this model culturally appropriate for our own community. And so having the flexibility, like you, uh, having the flexibility to be able to build this program to meet the needs of our community is something that is so great about having those funds directly from the tribe. Mm -hmm.